How are we doing guys? Welcome to DT's Daily. Now on today's show we're going to take a look at Everton because Carlo Ancelotti has left to join Real Madrid. Um, next piece of news involves England and we're going to take a look at Gareth Southgate's squad for the Euros this summer. And the last piece of news involves Arsenal because reports are suggesting that they are about to sign a new goalkeeper. I represent my fucking self. How are we doing guys? Welcome to DT's Daily. That's right. So the first place we're going to start is that breaking news from yesterday. Carlo Ancelotti has left Everton. Bit of a surprise this one, really, really out of the blue. Um, but he has returned to Real Madrid. Of course, he has been manager there before. But it's just a massive shock, to be honest with you. I know that they didn't have the greatest of seasons, or shall I say the greatest of ends to the season. They actually finished in 10th place, and that was a poor, poor season. But there was a point you know, a couple of months ago where Everton were chasing down a Champions League place and it didn't look too bad. I don't know whether, you know, the end to that season and the way it, you know, finished ultimately, you know, forced his hand and he said, nah, I'm, I'm out of here, mate. I'm on my way back to Real Madrid. And yeah, Real Madrid are obviously going to be doing a massive rebuild and everything else if they even have the money to do it. But um, I suppose the lure of going back to Spain and Real Madrid and everything else was just too much to refuse. And um, yeah, Carlo Ancelotti has left as Everton manager. And uh, what do they do now? Where do they go? There's so many, um, you know, vacancies right now. And um, I don't know whether there's that many top, top end, you know, managers on the market. Uh, one name that I, you know, saw being mentioned yesterday was Steven Gerrard. Honestly, I can't see Steven Gerrard going and managing Everton. Honestly, I know that the rivalry between them is fierce, but not of a level that some, you know, rivalries are. They call it the friendly derby. But Steven Gerrard is an icon, a legend of Liverpool. He, nah, it's, Sorry, he's not going to end up at Everton. No way. I can't see that in any way, shape or form. I do think that Steven Gerrard will end up in the Premier League. Don't think it will be next season. I think he'll stay at Rangers. Um, and I feel that maybe when Jurgen Klopp's left Liverpool, then that might be the opportunity for him to come into the Premier League. Um, but yeah, Everton, they're going to be looking for a new manager because Carlo Ancelotti has left. Um, next piece of news involves England and uh, Gareth Southgate has uh, named his 26-man squad uh, for this summer's Euros. Um, I'm going to go through all of the names first of all and then I will you know, go through some of the key points in there. Um, but the goalkeepers, Dean Henderson, Sam Johnston um, and Jordan Pickford. Um, and of course, uh, one player did have to drop out from there, leaves the three. Uh, Ramsdale was the one that actually dropped out. Defenders, Trent Alexander-Arnold, despite all the talk that he was going to be dropped. Ben Chilwell, Connor Cody, Rhys James, Harry Maguire, Tyrone Mings, Luke Shaw, John Stones, Kieran Trippier, Kyle Walker. Uh, midfielders, Jude Bellingham, uh, Jordan Henderson, Mason Mount, Calvin Phillips and Declan Rice. Um, the forwards, Dominic Calvert-Lewin, Phil Foden. Jack Grealish, Harry Kane, Marcus Rashford, Bukayo Saka, Jadon Sancho and Raheem Sterling. Um, now, Greenwood um, has come out of the squad, but that was of his own accord. Apparently, he's got an underlying um, injury and, you know, that's why he, he's dropped out. And first and foremost, one thing I will say is congratulations to Saka as an Arsenal boy. Um, very proud for him and his family. What a moment. His first, um, you know, squad involvement for a major tournament and everything. So, yeah, absolutely fantastic. But I look at this squad and the first thing that stands out a million miles away is four right backs. Four. Oh, really? Four. What this says to me is that Gareth Southgate didn't have a pair of balls to you know, get rid of a couple of them and ended up just going for all of them. You need two at the most, two. That's what you need, two. Three at stretch, 
four. You're having a laugh, mate. Honestly. Um, I'm looking at the other names in there as well. I think that when you're looking at first choice right back, I feel that it would be between, for me, hmm, I really rate Trent Alexander-Arnold. I love the guy. I think his quality and his delivery could be so crucial to England. Um, Reese James, superb. Kieran Trippi has had a great season. Um, and then you've got Kyle Walker at Man City. And yeah, Gareth Southgate just didn't have the balls to turn around to two of them and say, you're not coming. Uh, Jude Bellingham, congratulations to him as well. Um, that's, that's big for him considering he's only just left Birmingham uh, to join Borussia Dortmund this season. Um, Henderson, how will he fare with his fitness and everything else? Um, and yeah, Mason Mount deserves his place. Calvin Phillips, I've got my reservations. Um, but one of the surprise, um, you know, players to be excluded was Jesse Lingard. Now, he's had a fantastic season. I think when you weigh it up in the balance of everything, he's had a good six months or so out of a couple of years. But Gareth Southgate himself has said that he picks players based on form, not reputation. Well, I look at this squad and there's a lot of players in here based on reputation, not form. And yeah, Lingard didn't have the greatest end to the season, should we say, the last couple of games or so. Um, but I felt he did enough. And one story that I see, and I think this kind of just adds insult to injury, but England are playing um, Austria tonight, I believe it is, in a friendly. And Jesse Lingard is going to be playing. And Gareth Southgate's already confirmed that he will be playing. So you don't include him in your 26-man squad, but as a kind of token gesture. Oh, by the way, have a game though. Go on, go on, have a game. It's embarrassing. You should go with a 26-man squad for the friendly games that you picked for the Euros. But you're not, you're kind of like, yeah, you know what? Let's give you a little token gesture. Go on, have a little run out. Come on, man. What is it, a charity game? Seriously. Um, and honestly, yeah, I'm not really expecting too much from England. Never happens, never has, never will. And I think the way that we play football under Gareth Southgate is boring. So um, don't expect too much to happen, but we will wait and see. Um, last piece of news involves Arsenal. And reports yesterday were suggesting that Andre Anana um, is set for an imminent transfer um, as a replacement for Bern Leno. Now, for all of you that don't know who Andre Anana is, um, he is the goalkeeper for Ajax. Now, he's currently serving a ban, a 12-month ban. Um, and I'm sure most of you have seen the story. He apparently took um, a substance that was not allowed. and But, yeah, it was such a strange story. He's not deliberately gone out doping and trying to get an advantage or something. It was just like the maddest story behind it. And you've got to feel sorry for him. And um, before this ban came in, he was regarded as one of the most highly rated goalkeepers in Europe. Um, he originally came from Barcelona's academy. Um, so he's got a very, very good run. But um, he's um, somebody that I've seen a few times when I watch European football, Champions League matches, etc. Not really paid great you know, detail to him. Looks very comfortable with the ball at his feet, which is obviously something that Arsenal want to do. Um, but he's got his appeal for his ban, and I believe that's today, actually. Um, and he's trying to have it reduced or, you know, squashed or whatever it might be. Um, if he has to serve the full 12 months, then I believe it ends in February. Um, but if he can get a few months knocked off, great. Maybe available start of the season. But... Dependent on what happens is the asking price. And, you know, if he got his ban squashed, apparently it could be about 9 million euros, which I still think is a bargain. Um, but if he doesn't, then it'll be about 2 or 3 million euros. And Arsenal kind of planning for life without Bern Leno because it's looking very ominous that he's not going to be signing his new contract two years left. So Arsenal are making a move now. Um, and I suppose they're looking at him thinking, well, if his ban does, you know, stay until February doesn't really matter because Leno's going to be there next season. We've got the replacement already in. 
and he can train and learn and develop and do everything over the next few months whilst you know he's waiting for his band to finish so it's a very interesting one um and like i said it's um definitely a position that arsenal want to get sorted immediately uh, before this ban, he was highly regarded. He was sought after by a whole host of top clubs without, you know, through Europe. And, um, yeah, it'd be good for him to get his career back on track after this um, incident and his ban and everything else. So uh, we'll wait and see what happens with his ban and uh, whether anything can uh, be reduced or whether it's going to stay as the 12 months. So there we go. That is it for today's DT's Daily. As usual, let me know in the comment section what you think about today's topics. If you're new around here, hit the subscribe button, smash a like on this video, and I will see you a lot soon. I'm out of here.